Uh, this time it's going to be discussing complex conditional statements, a uh, more nuanced advanced lesson from last time. Uh, these will involve conjunction and disjunction statements, uh, which we'll refer to as and versus or, and exclusive disjunctions, uh, which you will notice uh, with the wording, uh, which says, but not both. Uh, that's an indicator that's going to be an exclusive disjunction. And I'm also going to be teaching you how to form the contrapositive uh, with these two concepts. Um, a little disclaimer before I continue, uh, I actually do have a different uh, device to record with. It's actually my laptop. Um, I had to move back home because of the virus uh, to help out my folks. And uh, so I just want to apologize if you hear more ambient noises, uh, background noises, and um, if the quality is lowered. But anyway, back to the video. Uh, I'd like to start with the distinction between and and or statements. So, the first thing I want to say is that there's an important rule to absorb. When you see these clear indicated words, uh, both, either, not both, and neither, uh, versus the two variables, there's actually a correct diagram that actually follows suit. So when you see these indicated words, uh, the correct diagram for both is the plus sign, and, it represents and. Either, or, or it's just what the word or, because it's short and sweet. Not both, which is or, uh, with the two variables crossed out, so canceled. Neither A nor B, which is uh, the two variables crossed out, and, with an and symbol. And I will explain both of these right now. Although this provides an easy way to diagram these rules and becomes an essential tool to diagram complex conditions and exclusive disjunctions, they can also be misleading. For example, in the sentence, the fruit salad includes bananas or papayas. This insists that one of the bananas or papayas needs to be in the fruit salad. So if we see an answer stem that doesn't have bananas or papayas, we know it is incorrect. But did you notice how I didn't say only, exactly, or must have, uh, just one? That's because in an OR statement, it allows for the possibility of both. This is a little tricky, since in conversations when someone proposes uh, you can have chicken or steak, or uh, waffles or pancakes, uh, typically one of the options will be eliminated. Uh, that is an invalid inference in the context of the LSAT. So when you come across an OR statement, uh, just remember that it requires one of the two options to be present, but there can also be both of them. Additionally, the diagram itself could be tricky. Uh, when you come across the not both rule, it seems counterintuitive for it to become a disjunction, uh, an or statement. However, it is exactly correct. Don't let the words not both fool you because it has the word both in it, a conjunction in it. For example, in this statement, the squad cannot include both Maverick and Iceman. One of Maverick or Iceman can make the squad, but remember neither one can make the squad as well. This rule simply rules out the possibility of having both. So, it cannot have Ma it cannot include both. So, just to reiterate one more time and clarify, uh, both cannot be in the solution. However, one of them can be present, the other one can be present, and they both also uh, cannot be present as well. So, just to make it clear, uh, that's why it's an OR statement. In the next statement, uh, I'd like to explain the diagram of a neither statement, A nor B, with an example. Neither bunny in away nor cellulite be gone is part of Shark Tank. So you would diagram this, uh, with the B, that's crossed out, plus, which symbolizes the AND, and C, which is crossed out. This means that each condition does not happen. So while we had options earlier uh, with OR, this completely eliminates that choice. So B and C are eliminated options and cannot be in any answer sum. Typically, when you see a neither, uh, slash nor statement, 
you think it has to follow the A or B diagram because of the alliteration, you know, nor, or, but that's not true. They are not related. It is an and symbol. It is a plus. So remember that. Now that we understand and versus or, we need to understand exclusive disjunctions, which is followed by a but not both phrase. Here, I will start with an example and the correct diagram representation. So in the sentence, on the top right hand, uh, either Snoop Dogg or Drake, but not both, is in the top 10 list on the hip hop charts. So in this exclusive disjunction, uh, we essentially need to combine both uh, the previous concepts. It's very simple. Uh, essentially, we would just either Snoop Dogg or Drake. We would put, uh, it looks a little ugly, but it gets the job done. Uh, that way we can list uh, this deduction or uh, this condition uh, down while we're uh, doing the logic games. Uh, and it'd be easy to basically look back on and see, you know, and clearly see, that, okay, one of these, one of that. It's very simple. Uh, this one you might not even need to write down because it's so apparent. Like I said, it's a quick little reminder in case you, because we've all done it, we're taking PTs or uh, trying to do our own logic games and our own studies, and we accidentally forget about a rule, and then we select the wrong answer because, guess what? That's what the, the writers want you. They, they, they want to trick you. So it's important to write down these, these conditions. Now that we understand the difference between uh, conjunctions and disjunctions uh, and how to diagram them, uh, it's time to learn how to apply them when conditional phrases include them. So uh, just to uh, reiterate from a previous video, uh, we can form the contrapositive uh, when there is a conditional relationship uh, between uh, two phrases or two conditions. Uh, essentially forming the S to N relationship, uh, the sufficient and the necessary condition. To form the contrapositive, uh, there are three rules. One, we need to flip the conditions. Two, we need to negate everything as in all the signs. Uh, so if it was uh, canceled, then it would be added. Or if it was added, it would be canceled. And three, we would need to change the OR to an AND and vice versa, the AND to an OR. So in an example, if the senator from Oklahoma gives a speech, then neither the senator from Texas nor the senator from Mississippi gives a speech. Uh, to form the contrapositive, we do I step with the three rules. So step one, we flip the conditions. So now it's T and M over here. And it goes to the Oklahoma Senator, the O. Second, we need to negate everything. So these two were crossed out, so now they're fine. But now the Oklahoma Senator is crossed out. And remember, we do this to avoid forming, uh, or to avoid uh, logical fallacies like converses, you know? And, we're, and then we make the relationship not work because I've done that before. Uh, when I'm trying to answer a practice question, I accidentally you know, forget to ne negate the symbols and then suddenly uh, I shot myself in the foot. I'm going down the rabbit hole and I'm answering questions incorrectly because now I have a wrong, I have a pretense uh, a constant that's uh, occurring in each and every one of the questions I'm answering. But anyways, uh, the third rule is to then change the or to an and and the and to an or. So, when this was a plus symbol, this is now an OR, like so. So, T or M to O, uh, which is cancel. A final, more complicated example of this uh, is a sentence. If there is no cranberry sauce, then there must be either pumpkin pie or apple cobbler, but not both. The final concept we will discuss now is a more nuanced deduction to make, uh, known as the transitive conclusion. This is just something you need to make from these complex conditionals and other, and actually all the conditional statements, and most rules actually you see. Uh, the transitive conclusion is formed by the necessary condition of one statement being the same as a sufficient condition of another statement. Uh, it might sound complicated, but trust me, it's very simple. And, and it's actually better to describe with an example. So, let's examine a simple, sufficient, necessary condition statement, such as, 
uh, uh, what will they have for dinner? If there are berries, then there will be pot pie. There are no nuts unless there's no pot pie. So now with the transitive property, uh, we just need to make deductions. So if bear, if berries and pot pies are for dinner, that means there'll be no nuts. So let's write out this deduction. When there are berries, uh, there will be no nuts. And like I said, you can tell because when there are berries and there's pot pie, when there's pot pie, there's no nuts. So when there's berries, there's no nuts. When there are nuts, there is no berries. Putting the transitive property into context, uh, this is an extremely helpful deduction to make uh, when you're trying to solve uh, a plugged-in condition, uh, such as uh, player X is in row, column, slot 3, uh, what is a possible outcome. And we can easily depict which answer stem uh, is incorrect. And also for absolute questions, uh, you know, which involve uh, a deduction we made that shows, okay, these two can't be paired together, so answer A, D, and E, which has those two paired together, th those have to be incorrect. Anyways, that is all for this video, and we'll sum up my tutorial for conditional phrases. Uh, and I will see you guys next time when we'll be actually attacking the structure of logic games head on, uh, namely the one-to-one -one correspondence overbooked and underbooking games.